in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's good he shall try here the most woke no joke and i'm back, back, back at again with a brand new video and i'm gonna keep it a bow bear biscuit here this is some very, very big news, but actually it's a double whammy of big news because first off, not only are we talking about a guy retiring from being a coach on the team, we're also going to be talking about the hiring of his replacement on the team, which he was pretty much announced as the as the next guy up just about 30 minutes after the news dropped that Jim Skipper had retired. So this move is already planned and in the works probably weeks before today, and it's just now getting announced or just now actually went through. But... That's all one thing. The second part of the double header is that this news, all of what we're seeing going on with the Panthers right now, all the coaching changes, might actually be indicative of an even bigger issue going on with the Panthers right here that I'll get into by the end of the video. There is a big message that I think some of us may be missing here. We're seeing all the signs, but I don't think we're connecting all the dots the way they're supposed to be interpreted. And if I'm right about this, there may be a lot to read into, and not only just this move, but a lot of the more recent moves we're making in this offseason. We'll get to that a little bit later, but first off, already hinted at it, Jim Skipper, one of the, I can't say one of the best, I mean, he's probably one of the best running back coaches in the league or in the, in the history of the NFL. I don't have the data on that comparing all the running back coaches, but it's very, very fair to say that Jim Skipper was an extremely, an extremely influential and positive force in the lives of numerous NFL running backs lives. I mean, I can go into this man's resume until your eyes crossed. I mean, he's been in the league for what, 30 years so far? He spent a lot of time with the uh, Saints from 1986 to 1995. He had Ruben Mays, Dalton Hillard, I mean, Derrick Brown, Mario Bates. Then he went to the Cardinals. He had Larry Sinners. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good one. He had time with the Giants. Uh, biggest name there was probably Tiki Barber, uh, Gary Brown. Then he went to the Titans with Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson got a thousand plus yard season out of that. Then he had two separate runs with the Panthers, split only by his head coaching, I guess, uh, experiment in the XFL. We know that that didn't work out, not because of him really, but because, I mean, the, the XFL just didn't work out. Hope it comes back around this next time and it does well. That would be very interesting. I might do a video on the AAF. I forgot. I keep forgetting to do a video on the AAF. I have a lot of thoughts on the AAF and what the XFL has to do but I think what they will do to make sure they're not as... I'll get I'll, I'll my thoughts later on that. Anyway, I mean, we know the guys who coached up in the, the Panthers. I mean, Stephen Davis, Deshaun Foster, talking about Nick Goins, D. Will, uh, Jay Stu, obviously Fozzie Whitaker, to a lesser degree, Mike Tolbert, lesser degree, Christian McCaffrey, only in his second year, but even CMC himself expressed just how influential and just how much of a positive impact that Jim Skipper had in his life. I'm gonna start calling him Skip. That's what the players call him. Uh, I'm just gonna say Skip now. But this man has touched a lot of guys, a lot of running backs' lives. And honestly, even though these guys have to be talented to get the job done, they're the ones on the field. This man has made a lot of guys a lot of money. I mean, he's responsible for nine different thousand yard rushers in his 30 plus years in the league. That's amazing. That's 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 high impact. Like, yes, that, I, it's kind of hard for me to even internalize that. Nine different guys with a thousand yard seasons under this man. He obviously knew and, uh, and knows what he's doing. And at 70 years old, I think he knows what he's doing here as well, saying, you know, it's time to hang him up. I'm 70 years old. I've done a lot of big things for this team, and I've done a lot of big things for the NFL in general. Time to enjoy my life. Probably do a little bit of traveling. You know, who knows what he's going to do. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised if he took a year or two off and became a consultant for some team somewhere. I don't know. But the man Jim Skipper has done a lot. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the uh, Panthers.com article talking about him. There is so much on this man. I can go through and read all of his stats, go through his, go through the man's resume. He has done so much, but I will be spending my whole video talking just about Jim Skipper. But I don't really have the time to do it. This will be a 45 minute video because I have to get to this next man, the man who was hired to replace him. We saw it first reported by Albert Breer. Throw up this tweet right here. Source, the Panthers have hired Alabama assistant Jake Peets to replace Jim Skipper as running backs coach. Peach was Raiders QB's coach in 17. And this right here is a very interesting hire, not only because of how quick it happened, but because this is a very young guy right here. I mean, Jake Peach is actually literally half the age of Skip. Skip 70, Peach is 35, and Peach brings to the table a very, very interesting resume. And honestly, I'm kind of impressed by what I'm seeing here. In 2012, he was the offensive assistant for the Jags. In 2013, he was the offensive analyst and the uh, quarterback assistant for Bama. 2014, he was offensive QC and receivers assistant. And 2015, he was a senior offensive assistant for the Raiders. Then he got promoted to assistant quarterbacks coach. And in 2017, he became the quarterbacks coach for the Raiders. And I know you're thinking, wait, wait, wait. 
He was the quarterback's coach for the Raiders. How's that quarterback over there in Oakland doing? Who's that quarterback again? What's he looking like? And what's the quality of uh, of, of, of life and, and gameplay looking like at, uh, at over there in Oakland? I know what you're thinking, but, I mean, when you're coaching up Derek Carr, you got your work cut out for you. So, I mean, I'm not going to put that blame on him too much. And then just last year, the man went back to Bama, back to Nick Saban, and reportedly he had a very integral part in getting the RPO, getting the zone read scheme down for two attack of Viola. I really hope I said that name right the first time because I cannot try to say it again. And obviously, Tua was a Heisman finalist. They got to the big game, and we know what happened there. You're probably asking yourself, wait, wait, wait. We're hiring a guy whose last stint in the NFL was a quarterback coaching position, and then he got kicked out of the NFL and went to the college game. Why are we getting this guy to coach our running back, Christian McCaffrey? Well, there's a little bit more context here than the resume actually reveals. He was supposed to be the offensive coordinator under Josh McDaniels when Josh McDaniels was supposed to be the head coach of the Colts. We saw what happened there when he basically reneged on that, basically shot himself in the foot for getting any other job other than in New England. And we all know that Bill Belichick is never going to retire. They'll, they'll have a robot with Bill Belichick's head attached to it before they actually hire a different coach there in New England. So I'm not sure what his thoughts were there. But basically, Josh McDaniels kind of, I don't want to say he screwed him over, but Josh McDaniels screwed someone over. I'll say what it was. He screwed a lot of people over. And basically, it made uh, Jake Peets have to go and find his options, and he went to Bama. Had a pretty good year there. I mean, honestly, he had a very great year there. And if you think about it, in the two years we've had Christian McCaffrey on this team, we've seen Christian score touchdown rushing, score touchdown receiving, and he scored a touchdown by passing. So who better than a young, offensive-minded guy who's had experience as a receivers coach, a running back coach, and a quarterback coach. I mean, I don't expect to see very much more of Christian McCaffrey throwing the ball, though I wouldn't be surprised. Now, honestly, just last year, we saw a lot of teams let the receivers throw passes. I mean, we got a touchdown pass on us with uh, O.L. Beckham Jr. That was a heartbreaker. That was, I think, the first one of the season. That one was a killer. I remember watching that game. I about, <laughs> I about threw a shoe at my TV. I ain't going to front on you. But uh, this is actually a very, very interesting pickup. And seeing us get a young guy, a guy who's not afraid to go get it, a guy who, when he's paired with North Turner, might just bring a little bit more out of Christian McCaffrey. Not to say that, you know, Skip didn't bring a lot out of Christian McCaffrey. He obviously did. But, you know, getting a younger guy in there, getting a guy who's offensive-minded, you know, getting these younger guys seems to be what's new and what's in vogue with the NFL. Get these young guys from the college scene. Guys haven't had a chance to get their own scheme or whatnot. See what they can do and hope they bring something that's so innovative that confuses the, the, the minds of these dinosaur DCs in the league. We'll see how that works out for us. But like I said earlier, I really do want to touch on one more thing that I think we might be missing in all this uh, all of this smoke and mirrors of what's going on with the coaching staff. You know, we replaced the secondary coach. I mean, D-line coach, the linebackers coach. Uh, Eric Washington got demoted. I'm not even sure what Eric Washington's real job title is. Ron Rivera is now the D.C. for the team. I mean, the only person who really kept his job was North Turner, and he's the new guy on the block. I mean, honestly, I guess the uh, old line coaching staff has been the same. But for the most part, there's been a lot of coaching overturn here, and I'm really thinking that either David Tepper or Marty Herney are trying to isolate what the issue is for the Panthers not having success for a while now. And it's like, okay, we have a really good offense. We're going to go out and get a really good defense. But we've also changed this coach, this coach, this coach, this coach, this coach. And the last variable that we still have left is Ron Rivera. So, Ron, we've got all these new coaches in position over here. we got all this talent on the field for you right here. Can you get the job done? We believe in these guys. We're giving them a chance here. We haven't been having success. We have all these new guys around you here. What can you do with this new talent, with these new voices in the locker room, with these guys who are... They're good. These are good guys. These are good coaches that we've hired here. These guys are valid. They're vetted. So I'm really, really thinking that. So I'm really, really thinking that David Tepper is honestly trying to isolate what the real issue is. I would not be too, too surprised if behind the scenes this was a sort of you know hush hush way of telling Ron that seat you're in might be a little bit warmer than you think. We want to see results. These guys are all new around you. We got you new pieces. There, there's guys, there's weapons, there's things around you to help you succeed. Can you do it? And I think we're going to have to get that answer this season. But what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Skip leaving? What are your thoughts on Jake Peach? Look them up. I have links in the description below. But also, 
Do you think that all these different coaching moves and all these different uh, staff and all these different uh, looks that we're getting here, are these indicative of the higher ups in the Panthers organization saying, Ron, can you do it? And if you can't, we might need to see if we can find someone who can. Let me know in the comments below. And you already know to do that like button. Cheers to you, appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend, to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.